Hey, so I'm here with Rutledge Wood, and you guys just announced a couple custom builds. We're here yes. at SEMA, obviously. We're talking about the Supra, obviously, and there's two builds, and your build is called the Hyper Beast Edition. Is that right? That's right. I got the Hyper Boost Edition. We turned the boost way up on this thing, and I got to build it against my friend Ed Laukas, who he built the Heritage Edition. And Ed has been my friend at Toyota for years, and he's the one that got me into the Toyota Pro Celebrity Race, and I've been hosting SEMA. I think this is my sixth year in a row. Wow. Uh, Doing this with Ed. So when he threw the opportunity out, I said, Yeah, we got to do it. I'm in. That's so cool. This is my first SEMA ever. <laughs> no way. You know, I have a Supra here in the booth, and I saw it up on screen. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's overload, isn't I mean, it? Like, it's unbelievable yeah, to like, see these cars in person. Well, heading into this year's show, Toyota launched the best SEMA Supra competition for people showcasing the modified 2020 GR Supras all around the show. I didn't know you were going to be doing a competition and like, you know, I knew I wouldn't win, but I saw my my car up on screen, it was like my heart just dropped for a second. That's so amazing. This How is cool, like man. so cool. My first SEMA, here I am. And your build, tell me about your build. Tell me a little bit more about so, it. So uh, my friend Rick Leos and I put our heads together. He and I built a Camry a few years ago against a bunch of the NASCAR drivers and it, it crushed everybody. So we decided we need to take the same big approach at it, go wild. Um, he reached out to his friends at Boost Logic and they've got a great package, so new turbo, new ECU, and got that thing at 750 at the wheels, uh, which is pretty gnarly because you got to do a little work to get around the transmission, is my understanding. So uh, And maybe the fuel in. Uh -huh, I'll say that as <laughs> vaguely as I was instructed to. So, um, but we knew, I always love to think about what it is that, that makes me think, like my 93 Super I'm building right now is the reason that I fell in love with those cars. And of course, when I was a kid, I couldn't afford one, right. but I would see, you know, an 87 and think, man, maybe one day I could save and I could get one of those. And so I wanted to stick in that sort of family of Toyota. So that's where I came up with the, the cement color off the Tacoma and the Tundra. I love that TRD Pro cement color. So it came out great. We did a real carbon overlay on the roof. Uh, and then I love the little duckbill spoiler. The wing on the back, as you know, it's, yeah, a, about the wing. it's yeah. tough because you're trying to figure out what's the right proportions. And when you see like the new GT4 that they're going to sell as a race car here that you can go buy and, and go track, that wing probably perfect. Like that to me is so good, it's yeah. so clean, it's so functional. I really wanted to make one that would look like Ed's Heritage Edition with the Mark IV wing. That's right. out of hand. I, I don't. <laughs> hey, because it's so, you know... But yours car, has a different touch to it. Totally. Then. And and mine is definitely more kind of squared off. We wanted that same sort of feeling, but uh, I really think the car came together great. Uh, we did KW suspension. Those are handmade in Germany, shipped over nice. days before we needed to roll, which is amazing. Chris Marion made that happen. Uh, Brembo brakes. Uh, when I, distance. Yep. When I reached out to Continental, I knew I needed a, a lot of tire. We kept trying to figure out how much can we do. That's a 335 in the back. That's a that's Whoa. like a C7 fitment, and it's nice. the extreme contact sport. So, you know, when you have that much power, you definitely want to get it down to the ground. Yeah. Now you've got a bit of a body kit in there too, right? Yes, and that is custom designed by LL17, which is Rick's company, and a 20-piece carbon fiber kit. The way that we made the one for the Camry is pretty similar. It was all starting with kind of 3D printing and modeling, figuring out how can we hide the hardware. Now, don't get me wrong. I love you know, Rocket Bunny, Panam, anything with exposed hardware. My right. RWB has it too, but there's also something to be said about when you can have something that's that clean. That's that's the kind of look that I like yeah. personally, actually. I like how clean it is and how it just sort of flows into the body. And from 20 feet away, you can't quite tell it's the body sure. until you get a little bit closer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I just, you know, it's tough when you're when you're talking about a car that has such good lines from the factory. As you know, it's hard yeah. to, how do you reimagine something that was just imagined? Yeah. yeah. But I think that's kind of the fun thing. And, and you know the aftermarket is going to support this car in such a great way. That's what I love about this because there's there's been all this anticipation for 20 years, and you know pre um, you know pre announcement of the car, there's like a lot of sort of negativity floating around, right. and then the car comes out and the negativity starts to drop, and then now Toyota is supporting the aftermarket in like such a big way, and I think it's awesome that you're doing custom builds here, you're doing special editions. I mean, it's just great to see a manufacturer getting so well behind the aftermarket. It's like, that's just super exciting to me as oh, a, yeah. like an enthusiast. It's like, I love that where you're not like sort of fighting and like, sure. you know, they're well, like we saw, supporting it. It's funny, we saw with FRS and, and that partnership with Subaru, there were a lot of people that had that same notion of like, oh, I'm gonna hate on this because it's a co-build. And then they drove one and they shut up because they realized like, this is an amazing car. So to me, it doesn't matter who, el who else helped at the start of this process, if it's BMW, if it's somebody else, but 
It turns out the car is an amazing car. It's so fun to drive. There's great power. It's incredibly streetable. And you can also take these cars on the track as they are and have a great time. And so really, like the only thing that, that you would say is people that have that kind of notion, they're really just holding themselves back from enjoying something and for what? Like to, need to go drive it. Yeah, to feel like a keyboard warrior, like what a lame thing, go drive the car. It doesn't yeah. matter where it comes from. If it's a great car and you enjoy driving it, go drive it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, thank you so much. My really, pleasure. I'm so glad really you're here. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So cool that your car is here. Yeah. That's such yeah. a big. I'm like so stoked. That's such a big accomplishment, and and some people don't know how hard it is oh to, to make that happen. You've lived it. I've lived it. It's <laughs> it's almost impossible, and the relief that you feel when SEMA starts and your car is here is yeah. it's it's almost euphoric. So congradulations. Yeah. That's Th so cool you're you. be here and be a part of it. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. And, you know. Great thank to you. meet you. Yeah, Thanks thank for you. Me. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So we just talked with Rutledge about his Hyperboost car. Pretty awesome build. And here with the Heritage, the, we're here with the Heritage Edition. Tell me about this. What's uh, what was the approach behind this one? Well, if you already talked to Rutledge, then you have a much better mouthpiece than I than I am <laughs> by far. But our approach on this particular vehicle is. Am I talking to you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my approach on this vehicle and the team's approach on this vehicle was to build something that, that really, really reflected the details of it. We wanted to have a detailed car. If you look at the paint, the paint isn't just red. Sometimes you walk by it, it looks red. Sometimes you look into it and you can see there's blues and golds and silvers inside there as well. We took that same kind of thing to, to literally with the Dremel tool, opening up every single vent. But not just opening the vents, opening up the backside of the vents also, so that we could get the turbulent air out of the wheel wells. This allows some of the heat to come out of the car. Then we said, okay, those are the details we want to take all the way through. But we also wanted to give it the same kind of feel that the A80 Super had, where you looked at it and you said, I can do that in my garage. I can fix that up in my garage, and then I can take it to the racetrack. I can drive it as a daily driver. Well, we did that by going, I wouldn't say a mild tune on the on the uh, right on the, the engine computer. We we brought it up to about 500 horsepower. Okay. We put a uh, a uh, precision turbo in it, but it's based off of the stock Borg Warner turbo. Right. So we used the same turbine. We just put a bigger blower in it. They machined the housing, and it's literally a. Four, 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 and a four hour and a four hour job to change it out yeah. so, and that you can actually do in your garage. Awesome. So I see a lot of obviously, you know, it's a heritage edition, a lot of A80 details here, like the headlights, yeah. have, you know, the three piece projectors. The headlights was a challenge because we wanted to do something that, 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 first it was like, should we just copy the A80 headlights and or, or put them in? And, they're not going to work good in here, so we designed it. You know what? The housing looks fine. So we, these are all molded lenses in here, and they 3D printed buckets behind it. And we we put the halogen lights in here. They do light up. I just don't want to kill the battery. Yep. <laughs> um, we left the eyebrow in that because that's kind of a, a neat. Yeah. It's a new, you know, <laughs> iconic piece, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So. So all of these things were, were designed in a way. We, so, so tell me about these vents here in the door because this is, you know, this is obviously a challenge. If you know guys know what the car is like, you've got a door and then it opens up and you've got, you know, body. <laughs> we, we did a lot of work with the vents. And so, again, this was the last one. We're like, how are we going to do this? Yeah. So we decided, okay, let's take a reasonable amount that we're actually going to be able to flow air out through here. Yeah. So. Oh, nice. So that is opened up, and that that's a pretty good amount of opening in there for that. It doesn't need any more than that because we're not shoving much more. So, but what do you do? You blow it into the wheel well? No. Right. So, so we brought it into that little piece that seals seals pretty well. <laughs> nice. And it comes through this piece of cladding right here. And then we have it opened up in the inner fender well, and we have a screen in there to keep any crap from flying in there and all of that. And then we do the same thing coming out the back. And so every part of this has a, anywhere where there's an inlet, we made sure we had an outlet instead of just right. putting fake covers on it. Right, right. So what's the idea here just to, with this particular event here in terms of aerodynamics? Well, <laughs> it's hard to say because I don't have a fluid dynamics on my team <laughs> and we don't have access to a wind okay. tunnel. But we are, when we get the car back, when we get a chance, I plan on putting a bunch of yarn on it and finding out where all the flow is. Right. But we just kind of, I also know some pretty smart people, though, too. <laughs> so we said, you know, do you think? What do you think? So in, in theory, 
we're getting the air that's coming down the side of the car, plus we're getting the air coming out of there, and there's gonna be some flow, and we're bringing some of that out. It's really to evacuate, evacuate the turbulent air. Right. We took and worked with the HRE on these wheels. So you'll see, you might see some other cars out here with 305s in the back, mm -hmm. but you'll probably also see some rubbing. Yeah. Because we've literally set the offset based off of suspension out, a 10-inch wheel, nobody had an 11-inch wheel, measurements, measurements, so I, I had to put a 305 on a 10-inch wheel, come up, guesstimate how much bulge there was going to be on an 11-inch wheel, and we got up and we have it set, so it's about a quarter of an inch at full bump, which yeah. we set with our rear suspension. It's about a quarter of an inch from hitting, and you have about 50 thousandths on either side of the tread, too. Wow, So yeah. it, travels, it travels the whole way up. To, by doing, by doing the uh, 295s on the front and the 305s on the rear, we've added eight more inches of tire to the stock package. Wow, and these are you know, stock bodies yeah, in terms of the fenders. Is, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't want to go outside the fenders. Yeah. We, a lot of people are... So 295 well, up front. front. 295 wow. up front, 305 in the back. And, and how wide are the tires up front? 295. I mean the uh, the, the, the wheels? The wheel, 10 and a half inch. 10 and a half, okay. 10 and a half inch wheels. And so every set, we run teen suspension, coilovers in the front, and yeah. then in the back, we wanted to ensure that we'd have enough room to put the 305 in there. We did an inboard rock arm <laughs> suspension with push rods going down okay. to the stock mounting points. So that's how you get it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, get, you can get there. You can just get there, but we wanted to be safer. And this actually allows us to tune the thing so much easier. Yeah. So we can just come in, tune, set right heights, do everything else. We're bringing some unsprung weight out of the car. So all of those are positives. Um, we'll see nice. what happens. Yeah. The I mean, more heritage here, obviously. Right. We have the heritage uh, tail lights. Yeah. Yep. We have the heritage wing. This paint has a nice little fleck in it. You got like a little bit of blue. There's some gold, some silver, and some blue in there. You got that. You got it right. Yeah. We did center center exhaust, and because we ran the more tail lights in here, we don't have to have the right. reverse light there. We can put it right. Oh there. yeah. <laughs> so Very we didn't cool. have to replace with anything else. We hand built the diffuser. Again, we don't have a uh, aerodynamicus or a, a fluid dynamicus actually on board. Right. So what we did is looked at like the GR Supra over there. We looked at the, the Lexus IMSA car and said, let's have a look at their diffuser and their splitter. Let's shrink it down and then let's ask some smart people if they think these are the right angles and everything else. So everything was thought of as a track car, not necessarily as a, you know, I'm here, set off the bells and whistles. It's right. My competition is more of a Ferrari, I think, than it is a, a Honda. Right, so basically a throwback, you got a lot of A80 Qs in here, obviously, but still really functional in a track car, so it has the performance, it's not just looks. Correct, everything we did, we tried to do performance-wise. And we built that pace car that's right over there, mm -hmm. and so we were able to learn a little bit on that, and like I said, that's how I got my wheels to figure out what size right. to do. Right. The, so, so with these builds, yeah. are you looking at maybe bringing some of these things to market through TRD, some of the pieces in the future, or is this kind of like, you know, you're testing it out, basically seeing what the reaction is, and maybe bring them out in the future? Let's say, let's say, hopefully the the aftermarket will embrace some of it. I don't know if it's going to be TRD. I hope so, uh -huh. but that's their call. On right. That. We they, we're an open book. I'm not looking to make a dime off of it. I just like building the cars. Right. But. Uh, we did work with a lot of different groups to we we throw a concept at them and say can you do it so because we don't have a body shop in my shop right i don't want to so the the splitter on the front was done at a local local company also just little enhancements just wasn't crazy about that corner right uh -huh. there behind the rear wheel so we just added this and so yeah, it gives, so from a visual now, you're getting more of a teardrop look when you come off of the front splitter and you're coming down like this. So the front usually feels a little bit wider than the back. So, right. so it's just a little details. Well, you guys have done a really, really nice job with this. Thank you so thank much you. for, uh, what's your name? Marty. Marty, thank you so much for showing me around the car. This is awesome and I'm just super stoked to see what you guys are doing for the Supra and encouraging the aftermarket. And, I'm just stoked to have my car here. Too. I'm but stoked to have like, your car here like, too. Wow, I'm, this is my first SEMA, and I'm like blown away that I'm here talking to you. You know, talking to Rutledge and, and you know being with the Supra. This is 
is awesome. My pleasure, man. We love it. Thank you. All right. So this is the 3000 GT concept, which is based on the 1994 A80 Supra, and which of course is based on a race car. And some of the most unique features about this are the vents in the hood, these sort of triangular vents here. We've got a, a different splitter treatment here with carbon fiber. And what's really interesting is the body kit. Uh, we've got a body kit that doesn't have rivet. It's sort of over fender type, type style. And one of the other main features, of course, is the rear wing on this thing. It has a good look to it, though. You got to lay it down just right. Oops. And we have a diffuser down here, too. So. Uh, a lot of body kit pieces, it looks really, really nice, really aggressive. We have the inlay here, the carbon fiber inlay on the door piece. And the whole thing just looks a little bit more aggressive. This is very nice over here too, if you sort of look at the detail over here. And I like the way that uh, this works with the hood. So, really, really nice treatment. It's definitely a little bit more aggressive than stock. And you know, what I want to know, I hope that uh, this is released, I hope that TRD releases some of these pieces so that we can, you know, maybe uh, buy some of these pieces from, from Toyota. Of course, the aftermarket is going to be producing these things too, so a very, very cool concept. So we're here at SEMA, I'm going to be doing more videos. Let me know if there's more stuff that you want to see aside from the Supra, because I am here for the entire week. Let me know. Uh, my name is Eric, I've got a couple videos up on screen right now. I want to thank my Patreons, they're up on screen too. There's a Discord chat down below, all that good stuff, all the socials. Please subscribe. I'll see you super soon.